Hey, what's up, Forged friends? Thank you so much for tuning in. This episode is brought to you by some of our favorite brands on the planet. We got OP Seat Gaming Chairs. They make premium gaming chairs at a price that you can afford. And we sit in these each and every show, and legit, we've had the chance to check out a lot of gaming chairs. These are some of the finest. Uh, next up, we got Quasar Science. Quasar Science makes some of the coolest lighting in the industry. We're talking for Hollywood, for major productions. They light our set each and every time, so if you're tuning in, and watching this show, that's what you're seeing all over our set here at Forged. Forged is also brought to you by Sling Studio, the industry's first portable wireless multi-camera broadcasting platform. Monitor, record, switch, edit, and stream live HD quality wirelessly to all your favorite social media platforms. We use this each and every show, and it is awesome, people. Check it out. This episode of Forged is a really special one. We have Jess Condit, who happens to be my little sister on the show. She's a senior editor with Engadget, and she's also an author and journalist who does a lot of work in the gaming industry. Hope you guys enjoy. Without further ado, Jess Condit. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Forged on Forge X. We've got somebody's sister in house today. What? Oh, who? Jess Condit. What's oh, up, Jess? Senior editor for Engadget. Mm-hmm. Woo! Woo! Cheers to you, sister. First of all, Hi. cheers to cheers. you. Cheers. Thank cheers. you for being here. Yes, cheers. Thank I need some of that can. I need me. some of that can. Nos energy drink. I'm more than just a sister, though. It's Let true. me tell it's you true. my it's story. True. It's true. It's true. <laughs> first of all, Jesse Mitchell. We just had to get that out of the way drink. first. That's already enough right there. It's quite a lot to be a sister of this guy. Yeah. Oh, I'm surprised I made it this far, this long, this Mm -hmm. successfully. We know what forged you, so we'll skip that question. Yep, (laughs) exactly. That was mostly me, right? (laughs) I got my hairstyling tips from him, too. You should see pictures of this guy in high school. Oh, dang. I had luscious locks, bro. They were... It was longer than my hair. The, yeah. When the shower drained, it was because of him. Oh, no. Me. Yeah, and I remember our stepdad, great. Carl. That was his back hair, though. I love right? where this like, is going, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> he'd take that, remember that plunger is. thing? He'd go in the drain with and pull out gobs of yeah, my hair. Yeah, your hair. <clears throat> it's kind of weird. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It was very weird. Put those in those big Jenko pockets you had, too? Dude, oh, I did. Stop. We I all did. had those. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, dive in. Uh, so you're a game journalist, essentially, mm-hmm. and you've been doing that for... That's how you do a segue. Man, like eight years, I guess, eight years. technically, that's since awesome. I yeah, since I finished uh, college. Yeah, my so that's pretty year. cool. I'm yeah. sure there are a lot of people who... Yeah, exactly. I mean, I you get to talk about games and report on games. That's yeah. extremely and play cool. Them. Yeah, so going back <laughs> to the little Jess. Mm-hmm. Little Jess. I remember her fondly. <sighs> it wasn't a question aimed at you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so we're back here with we're Jess Condit yeah. stories about Jess. Well, Did you always want to be in like journalism? Um, actually, part of that is your fault, Scott. Um, because see, I told you guys. Well, and he's not wrong. You did. Yes, you have a huge influence on my life. What like, a sweetie. That's, in I'm, a I'm finally way, old enough to to admit that you would influence my life a lot. It's very mature. I know. Whatever. It's fine. <laughs> so should we, should we leave? <laughs> well, I, you know, we're just Ben and I are gonna. Yeah, it's fine. Um, no, like honestly, like the. The job that I wanted was a writer, mm. and I still like novelist is my goal. I'm still I'm writing another novel. I have one already, and like you I know, just know. really I'm on that grind. Yeah. What's the current novel? Uh, you have? The one that I have already is a near f- future science fiction novel about the world's first brain transplant. It's patient. pretty great. Nice. And you've read it, and the main character's name is Scott. So yeah. I don't know how much. This well, gets, yeah, oh, no brain. Yeah, this gets brain better and transplant. Better. Exactly. Whoa. God comes to mind. It makes hey. sense. Oh, it's it, it, yeah. Easy. Yeah. So is that is that done? Is that out? Oh, well, that's, it's done. I have okay. an agent, but having trouble finding a market for it. It's not oh YA. My God. It's not, you know, it's, okay. it's hard to sell. Have you told people to talk to your agent yet? Tell me you have. An agent? Yeah, have you told just people, like, talk, talk to my, my agent? agent and just you pull should. Card. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll work on that. That's I'll good. There. <laughs> I'm more focused on actually selling a book first. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so that's that one. And then I'm working on a, another one that I think will will be able to sell better. So Nice. So that's the goal. And that's always been the goal is writing. Like, that's... That's been my outlet for, yeah, ever. That's all you did when you were little. Mm-hmm. Reams of paper around the house with Harry Potter fan yep. fiction, man. That was like, yeah, yeah you killed a it. couple for us when we were little, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> but I also, but that's also where I got my start doing online writing. Like, mm. fan fiction yeah. was this new, like, cool thing that yeah. was happening online. And Harry Potter, I love, I, I'm covered in mm-hmm. tattoos, like, and, and my fandom, Harry Potter, Draco Malfoy, Ooh, they're meant to be. Dang. It's fine. 
but uh, no, the the way that you come into my oh, no. my future, and you you did. Um, <laughs> you guys are loving this. What aren't is you? happening? Ben and I just were on the same wavelength for a second. There. Oh, because he's a douche. What? Yeah. <laughs> I think we're all there. Whoa! Fine. Whoa! You we are. have to spend more time with him now than you do. So uh, yeah, thank yeah. God. We I hear, love we you. Are, we know, understand so where you're coming I from. I interpret all this as love. You're some of the closest people in the world really to me. You guys, you guys are so sweet. For hanging out with him. Keep so going. Much. So nice. Keep going. Okay. Our PayPal will change, so we'll get that to you. Okay. After. Thank you. Um, when was it? Freshman year. It was freshman year of high school, and I had to do a book report on uh, just someone famous. It was like, you had to read a biography, you could dress up as them, and give a presentation. And I was like, sweet. I went to the bookstore with our dad, and he was like, look at this guy. Look at this book by this guy. And it was a Hunter S. Thompson book. Mm. Look at this Hunter S. Thompson right above you. Oh, yeah. And the way that that dad sold me on like this thing um, before I had even like picked up the book. He was like, you know, your brother loves him. He did this movie that's really great, and he's he's a journalist and all this stuff. Uh, Hunter S. Thompson was apparently not good for high school students to be reading those. <laughs> <laughs> so the yeah. Uh, yeah, the teacher was like, your mom has to sign off on this, and then mom did not sign off on it. I relished oh, no. those <laughs> letters home, man. Dude, I was like, I know yeah. I'm on the right path now. Let's do this. But like, that's the thing. That's yeah. what I was like, well, then I'm definitely reading this book. You know, I'll do something else for the book report, but I'm going to read this, and I'm going to read everything this guy has written. Yeah. And Forbidden fruit, man. That was it. Yeah. That was it. It was over. Yeah. yeah. So journalism was kind of pretty clear after that interesting yeah. what yeah. was the first book you read from him was it fear and loathing or was it hell's angels no, it or? was kingdom of fear it was oh, no his shit. like biography his auto wow. biography it's you know everything he writes is kind of a memoir so. yeah yeah but it was very much kind of just about his life and, and so was that book like the catalyst of the future you i i think so i mean i read a lot obviously i read yeah. a lot i read a lot um but that was that was a clear like his writing, aside from just the the influence of my family, mm-hmm. his writing spoke to me on a really deep level. It was gorgeous. Hmm. It was gorgeous. Like I don't care about the drugs and all that other sure. crap that he was doing. It was nice to know though that it was first of all a real story, mm. as skewed as it was, but his perspective on life was just so refreshing at that time. So I don't know. He spoke to a to a teenage me in a very deep way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he had his own style, right? The Gonzo reporting. Oh, yes. yeah. Was him and the way he did that. It was yeah. incredible. Interesting. So, yeah. And so was that like, okay, I'm gonna go to college and you know X Y Z, then I'm gonna be this, or was it kind of like, well, let's just figure this out? Very much figure it out. I changed my major a few times. Okay. You know, like, yeah, yeah. Like writing was the thing, so I started with creative writing, mm-hmm. um, which surprise there's not a real career path after that Mm. and I already like I knew how to write when I was in those classes I felt like not that I knew more than the teachers or anything there was still like plenty to be learned but it to me it just felt like nothing I couldn't learn by writing more and by just continuing to to do what I was doing and I was getting positive feedback on my writing so I was like okay I can do this yeah so I changed to like neuropsychology for a hot semester and then Mm. I went to journalism after that neuropsychology for a writer who does a novel on well that's brain transplant that's cool that's cool yeah well, and you drive, you, as we learned recently from Cameron, you derive yeah. from your experiences, man, yeah. whatever they yeah. are, and you, you work yeah. that into your work, becomes a piece of you. That's yeah. cool. Totally. Right. That's you have to cool. create from somewhere real. Right. So, it's yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. so, so was that ASU? Uh, I ended up at ASU. Okay. Yeah. Bounced around a few schools, mm-hmm. but yeah. So yeah. I was trying to create the link then to games journalism. So you uh, mm-hmm. you played games from mm-hmm. a young age. What was like the first game you remember? Oh yeah, you tell me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what was man. The first game we played. I mean, we played a lot of NES. Obviously, yeah, but, NES yeah. was probably the one you started Probably. with because that was on the tail end of me having it. Mm-hmm. But I remember big time was that Christmas that Carl N64. brought home the N64. N64. Yeah. Golden Eye. Golden Eye was yeah. the game, man. Oh, and he was so sweet. Stepdad was like, "Oh, we a game system we can play together. Four controllers." Cut Bad to idea. him swearing at the TV during yeah, Golden. Like, I, throwing him down dude we would roast away. him you shot me without a gun <laughs> well, the rocket launcher <laughs> his memory of it too like we were up in Flagstaff recently he's like remember when I used to kick your guys' asses at Goldeneye we're like that's revisionist history son that's you got how that so went bad. yeah no he couldn't he couldn't do anything unless he had a rocket launcher yeah and it was so much fun like and we played Halo too I remember playing oh, multiplayer yeah. Halo oh with like, Becca and the oh, cousins so man good. yeah, yeah. Four Jared players back there can attest to my uh, my skills in, in Goldeneye back in the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> me and my brothers, dude. Mom would take it away. Well, that's because all oh, we would fight so much. Cheated over odd job, probably. Well, that was probably well, no, no, no. That wasn't me. It's cheating. I played the alien, not, right? which is also yeah. a smaller character. So yeah. maybe maybe there's something to that. See, this is where I think a lot of your confidence comes from because you were playing video games against your sister who is seven years younger than oh, you man. and your stepdad. <laughs> 
and you just won all the time. <laughs> well, see, and then yeah. someone's like, I'm really good at this. I should do other stuff. Dude, <laughs> totally re- role reversal though. Now you're probably not wrong, but now 13 year old kids are just roasting me in every game I play online, and making kids. fun of my mom. I'm yeah. like, I'm 36, son. This is why he you? won't play Overwatch because because he knows if he does, we'll because, just roast him. Well, so he'll just stick to Titanfall and pretend yeah. like it's the best game Overwatch ever. Overwatch is cute. I don't mind it. It's him. a cute game. You should. Overwatch you should. this. Cute. You're funny. Cute little game. You're funny. Yeah, it's a cute little game if you are slow. <laughs> so. Speaking of Overwatch, we had Johnny Cruz. It's true. Yeah. We had Johnny, Johnny Cruz on Cruz Lucio, awesome. the voice of Lucio. I saw that one. Yeah. Awesome. I love so what, cool. is, yeah. Yeah. what a sweetheart. I love the voice. He really embodies that like, he does. character. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Back on task. Mm. College. And Ooh. then, yes. so you graduate. Serious. Was it W.B. Carey? Or, uh, not the business school. Or, I went or to the Walter Cronkite. Walter Cronkite. Cronkite. That's right. This was, is Walter yeah. Cronkite. Walter yeah. Cronkite. Is that how he talks? He was... Yeah, he was Walter Cronkite. Dang, that's solid. Well, he, he was a little slower, though. He was, he was on the Muppets, block. right? He was like an eagle. Oh, jeez. Oh, Ben. Was he the voice of a poor, Muppet? Poor Ben. Wow. <laughs> Anyways. No. Ben's um, like 60. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like after graduating? You had it like, was it a mm-hmm. bachelor's or... It was a bachelor. Okay. Yeah, a bachelor's degree. And then so like, okay, you graduate. Now what? Mm-hmm. Was it like... Because that, that's really it's challenging, scary, right? getting into creative writing, especially in the games industry. Yeah, mm-hmm. you did some writing. Did you do writing with an outfit while you were in college? I did. Okay. So and I got that? lucky. So, like, my strategy throughout school was always, like, make things as interesting for myself as possible. Because then I'll actually do them. And I'll, I'll bend some rules. But if you do it well, people don't care, right? Like, the teachers actually appreciate it if you do it well. So I somehow convinced the 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 academic counselor or whatever that I could do an internship on an online site when the school at ASU the journalism school was not really sold on the idea of online journalism of, wow. of digital journalism and they're still kind of playing catch up wow. there I think and like I I had a professor there I talked about this uh, with talked about this a lot with and um, so I kind of had to convince them that digital journalism was a thing yeah. and it counted as much as a an internship at the Arizona Republic or something mm-hmm. um, so but I did and I, I not only ate an online outlet but I convinced them that a video game focused uh-huh. a death metal themed video game nice. focused uh, outlet was was just as good as anything else so I yeah I was at Epic Battle Axe and that was through game trailers that's Daniel right. Kaiser oh, that's awesome. he, yeah. he's, he was incredible he was a really good first boss figure to uh-huh. have um, so that was my internship in my final semester okay that built my resume and like just coincidentally luckily whatever uh, the fates shined down on me that joystick had not hired like a, a writer in 10 years or something no way. like they had not put out a call for a writer in like a long long time wow. and near the end of my school career they just put up a blog post that was wow. like hey we're looking for people and i was like yeah i'll apply out of and so, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people applying for oh, that yeah. same a position. A ton. Yeah, Jeez. I'm sure. And it was, I did it on the last day too. I was like, maybe I will, maybe I won't. And I was like, okay, fine, I'll just do it. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I got, I got the call and it, it all, I was so, I was so happy. Were you able to do yeah. that remotely in, in Phoenix? Awesome. Wow. And that's why, yeah, that's why I still work remotely mm-hmm. is because I kind of grandfathered my yeah. way into that. Most people are in the San Francisco or the New York office yep. right. and I'm still in Phoenix. We have an international airport. It's totally fine. But right. yeah. You touched, for, sorry, games yeah, yeah. is pretty competitive. I mean, Very. Yeah. Super competitive. Very. Yeah. And well, I, I kind of had, I was also the first woman, woman they had hired in, oh, wow. I mean, just as long. Wow. Um, so. So I did have awesome. like later on after a few years at you Joystick. You kind of saw what you were, how your value was. Dude, it was like yeah. I well, I heard from my um, from my coworkers who we were we all bonded so well. Joystick was a very very special team, mm-hmm. and it's still we still talk. I mean, like mm-hmm. daily and email and, and Twitter and everything. Um, they're they're all amazing people, but community uh, like yeah honestly. And I, I I heard from them a few years later. One of them in particular was like. Um, you know, when, when you first got hired, the first thought, and I even said to everyone, was, oh, great, we got a girl now. So Girls blah, in the treehouse. Yeah, oh, right? No. And it wasn't, it wasn't like a negative. They yeah. were just like, oh, okay, we got a girl. But then sure. I had to prove myself sure. in a way that I think a dude in that position wouldn't have had to. Yeah. But I did. Yeah. And I uh, tried to continue to. You know, like, yeah. that's kind of It's an honest reality. What you do. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Sure you face every time, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's cool. You touched on two things we've heard a lot, too, which uh, one is blazing your own path slash making your own opportunities mm-hmm. right and like 
if you sit around all day long, we all know this as creatives waiting for the phone to ring or waiting for someone to knock on the door and go, you're brilliant, I want to work with you. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the dream that we have. Give me that skeleton yeah, on cobwebs. And, <laughs> and hey, you know, not that you can't get there and not that people don't get there and, and those people earn that, that mm-hmm. ticket to ride, right? But like, if you're hungry and you want to do something, you don't have to just go to the wanted ads and look for that perfect dream job. Make your own, man, mm-hmm. right? And it seems like you did that, but you also answered the door when, when opportunity knocked, right? Yeah. How important was that? Like, going back to that moment, was there mm-hmm. any trepidation or fear? Or like, should I, am I qualified for this? Or was it just like, hey, man, let's roll the dice? I still ask that question every day. Am I qualified for this? Like, I mean, that's, I think, a daily thing for a lot of people, yeah. but especially in journalism where you are supposed to be the expert. When you write a story, mm-hmm. you're the expert, right? And that's, right. But and I want to be, and I try to yeah. be every day. Um, but no, I I was very scared. It was, it was, it was terrifying, but I didn't know what else yeah. to do. Like, I wanted to write for a living, and I spent years building my resume in that, you know, toward that goal. I found some journalism jobs online. I wrote for free for a while, and then I then I found that internship. I was like, okay, there's a niche here. I really I get this this vibe. Let's let's follow it. So it's as much of like trusting your gut and really doing what feels right as much as it is putting in the hard work and building that resume. Because if I hadn't have had if I hadn't had like a year at least of free online writing behind me yeah. for joystick they wouldn't have even looked at me it didn't matter sure that i was probably one of the only girls that submitted you know, like that that does not matter you paid your case. dues absolutely yeah. Yeah, i proved myself you yeah. just said something that so many people i think will resonate with especially the younger upstarts coming up man that's that's cool yeah that's mm-hmm. cool I, i've always been curious about this um not re- but for as far as journalism in general um i mean i've I did a few news and mm-hmm. reviews, you know, on Beef Jack for, yeah. like, way back when. Um, Beef Jack. Huh? Beef Jack. Yeah, it was a British outlet. <laughs> so he's 50, not 60. It's fine. See? Yeah, yeah so it's okay. I know Beef Jack. <laughs> what, uh, what kind of journalism were you up to, man? <laughs> Games. <laughs> I know Beef Jack. You're fine. You're in good company. Uh, but, uh, like, basically, <laughs> um, journalistic integrity around reporting is always an issue, I think, right? And just in general. Um, yeah. But when you're doing things like entertainment, like when you're doing reviews, when you're doing games, when you're trying to just do something new in the space. Um, I mean, how how do you take that? How do you how do you know you're staying in a certain realm of integrity and, and that you're not overstepping these boundaries? Which again, to me, seem if, I, I don't know where they are. Basically, right. I can't tell them on my own, and I, I don't know if that's something just over time that you get to, used to as a journalist or not. And and it must be shifting and changing, especially in an industry like games, where mm-hmm. the medium's know, shifting and changing constantly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the fact that you know yeah. loot boxes are you know now considered gambling. Like yeah, yeah that's yeah. just like one little thing. But that things change like mm-hmm. crazy. And I mean, like in terms of ethics and all that, in for for journalism, that doesn't change for me. Whether I'm reporting on politics or tech or gaming Mm -hmm. i mean i have the same the same ethics approaching all of those things i want to tell the truth i want to present all sides of the story like Mm -hmm. that that doesn't change at all um but then part of part of what i see like a lot of i think younger people now falling into like working for free trying to break into the games industry you end up writing for sites that do not have those same ethics Mm -hmm. and like do not actually follow that kind of code they'll take too, too get much the views, swag, get or the clicks yeah, anything, or they'll yeah. yeah, or they'll tell the story that like isn't right. actually sourced right, or mm-hmm. all that stuff. You don't stuff. know what's sponsored sometimes too. Absolutely, and well, that's getting better, that's but it's still a huge problem. Yeah. yeah, so so yeah, I don't I don't just approach it like any anything else. Yeah, yeah and you I mean you've seen it from as you mentioned like at a time when it was almost unheard of or avant garde like oh online journalism is that even a thing right, right. in college where you had to approve this by your your mentors mm-hmm. to now it's rampant like it's yeah. it's it's trying to to almost determine what is the legitimate sources there's a few that we know as staples that are the cnn's like end gadget mm-hmm. is the cnn of gaming or tech, tech journalism yeah. right but yeah i'm sure for upstarts now that's it's hard a lot of it's a minefield probably well and especially in the in the uk there are different standards in the uk mm-hmm. than in the u.s so like it's just a different vibe <coughs> over there i it's huh. it's a whole so yeah journalism as an industry has its own standards but then there's this microcosm and that's how we get into debates about games journalism is it really journalism mm. you know oh but, I made that joke on Facebook yeah this you morning, did and I was like I'm just gonna poke the bear here thanks because really you hear that all the time right I know you do games journalism yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so what yeah. is your response to that for people who are like 
and I think it's a misconception as people who aren't exposed to it, who don't understand. Right. Mm-hmm. And the funny thing is, we've had these discussions within family dinners, right? And the second you start dropping stats on how much money as an economy that games the are games generating, oh, yeah. billions, billions of dollars, bigger than Hollywood, it's lifestyle, a global I mean, economy. It's unreal. Not just yeah. North America, but Asia, everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. It's yeah. worldwide. Mm-hmm. It's a universal language. Yeah. Um, do you see that changing? Like, what's your take on, on when people say that? What do you feel, and what's your response to that kind of? Oh, here we go. Read my work. Yeah. Read my work. Yeah. It's real journalism. They're real stories. They're important. It's deep. And I like I try to focus on the people behind the stories. Like I'll write some business stories and those will be very technical and focused and whatever. But I always try to remind people that there are humans involved in this. Um like I mean the telltale closure that mm. just happened. Like yeah. well, mostly closure. Um mm-hmm. like that is a terrible story from a business perspective it's terrible just from an industry perspective but it's terrible from a human perspective mm-hmm. those are creative talented developers yeah, right. oh my god yeah. and We've and move there have family it's, it's just the thing that struck me is how much time they've got invested in these projects that are now not a part of their lives yep sorry yeah. Good day, sir. Here's your walking papers. Yeah. They're, and like, they're, they're working on doing what they can there. But and I hope a lot of them find yeah. find jobs where they can because yeah. that yeah. I mean, that's, that's not that's uncommon not. in the games industry. It's though. not. I'm sure you've talked to developers who. It's not. I mean, I know people who've worked for 20, 30 years yeah. in the industry and have zero games to show for it. Exactly. Wow. Because Seriously. they've just worked on games and then those games get shelved before they're even put out, mm-hmm. or the Development studio hell, shuts man. down and yeah. they go to the next studio and that one gets shut down. Like. Just like Crazy. movies. Yeah. I, I assume oh, yeah. movies Absolutely. do that yeah. too. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's vaults filled with scripts that have been optioned but never produced, right? And same yeah. thing with games. It's, it's crazy. Failure to launch. It is. Yeah. yeah. But that's why I like covering like the indie industry because mm-hmm. that's yeah. people. It's exciting too. That's like developers getting laid off mm-hmm. and saying, yeah. well, screw it. We're Taking good. Let's make destiny. our own games. Yeah. And oh, we've gotten so many too. good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so many good games from that. Mm. So, so I really like talking to to the people behind behind the games, and I think anyone can resonate with that story. It doesn't matter what industry it is. If you tell the human story at the center of it, mm-hmm. people kind of get it. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, no. It, it's in terms of like the people who don't think it's real. They're generally people who don't understand the industry anyway. Yeah. So I'm not going to convince them of much. That's fine. Go read right. Hollywood Reporter and be yeah, happy. That's yeah, that's right. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Teach his own, right? Hollywood yeah. Reporter's fine, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, is there something in as far as games journal? So uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Was it Kotaku that recently said they're going to get rid of review scores? Somebody's going to get rid of. Oh, a lot. Scores. That's okay. always that's a, a revolving right. door. So th- yeah. Exactly. So what is that mo- like? Same thing to do with Netflix, where they're not letting people review or no? Just like as far as a, so as you'd write an article and then you'd say, oh, we give this game a five right out of whatever yeah. yeah based on uh, our, our our scale that's for we metacritic have, right? really it's, yeah. it's just for metacritic it's the <laughs> right. aggregation and, and which that's that. a whole nother story that is, but yeah. is there something that you think is missing in the games in, in the mm. games journalism industry you know things like a way a take or just stories that aren't being told for some reason mm. like yeah i mean i'm working on a few so <laughs> um no i like with reviews one thing i think that people like readers and and even other people like in tech journalism maybe understand a little better but like game reviews take forever mm. oh i'm they sure are, you've got to play the game yes. for 20 30 hours just to have a at know, least an right if it's a big review. game yeah and the entire time god sitting down for a game review see like this is why i'm so stressed today i was just like i was playing a game that i really really love but playing it for review yeah. is yeah. Oh God! You're you're on the entire time. You're taking notes. You're thinking critically, and it's can't it's, even enjoy can't the game enjoy anymore. Enjoy it yeah. as yeah. much, you know. But you get a sense if it's a good game, it's a bad sure. game, whatever. You get lost in it sometimes. That's great, but no, it's they take so long to play and then to to write to put together oh a cohesive a yeah, yeah, yeah. A, out of all these scraps of whatever and you're trying to get the first one out, and Dude, I'm sure there's a race, there's a deadline, yeah. Jeez. Yeah. So it, it's just. That's it's it's hard. I mean, think it's about hard. like yeah. if, if like I thought about movie reviewers, right? Mm-hmm. And like you'd like to watch the movie once just to enjoy it as an mm-hmm. audience member exactly. and turn your brain off to exactly. the analytical side of it, and then watch it again yeah. with the thought process of okay, that's still yeah. only takes four, four hours. hours. Yeah, that's so still <laughs> four hours. Now you're talking about an interactive experience right. where you're thirty exactly. hours just to get through it once, <laughs> and then, dude, no one's got time for that. And what do no you think one. about ha- having like a technical background? Do you think it's necessary, or maybe even so that you shouldn't, or no, helpful? I think it's yeah. only helpful because that gives anyone like if you have that technical background you have an edge over the next reporter i don't know how games you know okay i know how games are made but like 
I don't know how to code a line of animation. Sure. I, I could not tell you, but someone who has that knowledge could go into an interview with, with a line of questioning that I just never would. Mm. Um, and that I think that's super, super important. Right. I would love right. to actually, right. I might take some lessons just in coding just to mm. catch up honestly to the high school students yeah, nowadays. For sure. Like right. that's how I feel so far behind now. Yeah. Yeah. Like for, again, like, we were talking about Red Dead Redemption 2, just mm-hmm. hearing some of the latest news mm-hmm. on that and the number of animals. The latest the news on that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Horse testicles sh- are shrinking, shrinking in, right in the door. cold <laughs> environments of Red Dead Redemption 2. I was thinking about customizing the hair on your horse. Yeah, but okay. Went I went balls. straight to the horse balls. <sighs> Listen, that happens. This is my life. Here we go. Rockstar so games. Back okay. to sensitivity training. <laughs> well, here we go. But I mean, that, and there those little shrinkage. things are impressive, you know, and mm-hmm. or rag, like physics or yeah. just things that you have that, again, if you're kind of looking at it as a player sometimes, you hear a lot, especially mm-hmm. on forums and stuff, right? A lot of the entitled, well, why does it have this? And if you actually knew how these things were made, it's you'd be huge. impressed with just what they have oh, right, right there. Yeah. And one thing I actually saw on Twitter today, I forget who said it. It was someone awesome that I follow in the industry. I'm sorry, I don't remember. But it was, it was just like saying, game developers are not like one for one replaceable a Mm. team that makes a certain game Mm -hmm. will make that game you can't just bring in anyone and have that same yeah it's a creative process you lose the guitarist and you're like oh it's just a guitarist that guy made the sound absolutely so yeah 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 yeah. so i think and i think a lot of especially with the triple a complex that we have Uh you know you see these like thousand development teams like thousand person development teams (laughs) on a on a single game and you think how can that have any soul how can that Mm. be but honestly, when you get to a smaller and smaller team, especially, yeah. it matters who yeah. is at the helm. Yeah. I'm excited to see what Valve does. They just oh hired, my gosh, yes. yeah, the like the Firewatch team, Campo mm-hmm. Santo, mm-hmm. and amazing. they are they are amazing storytellers. They're so good at what they do. Mm-hmm. Um, so like that's kind of where I'm looking right now, waiting yeah. to see what they do. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So going from Polygon to um, and Gadget. Nope, Joystick. Or Polygon. Polygon's the one that spun off of Joystick. The other, we, thanks exactly. for rubbing it in. Just remind. No, it so was actually totally, it was totally a cool knew thing. That. No. Totally knew that. So yeah, what did that look like? <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah, that was right after I started at Joystick. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, I mean, was that like? I mean, talk about an uprooting mm-hmm. of of what you think you know. It was. It was like I was a few months, maybe six months into Joystick. I had done one convention with them. I think I was still weekend editor, hmm. and. And yeah, then half of the team just said, "Hey, we're gonna start a new website." Isn't that crazy? And and they were they were great people, and it was like, oh, the team's leaving. Yeah. Was it kind of a mutiny vibe, or yeah, like, like, was it contentious? No, or, honestly, if you can talk about it. I mean, yeah, no, it's like I'm not gonna go into too much detail. Give us the inside scoop. Um, no, it was everyone kind of knew what was going on. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it sucks when people leave. So yeah. there was you know some like, oh man, mm-hmm. like that sucks. Mm-hmm. But we rallied, and and I think Joystick did it good job going forward really good job and polygon is killing it and they are, yeah. i mean the mcelroys they just left polygon but i love them and i'm so glad their stuff's taking off you know it's mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. i'm just i love seeing people do well yeah so i would love to see yeah. more of that mm-hmm. and that yeah. you know it sucked at the time but it, sure. it was a good thing in the mm-hmm. end yeah. yeah your analogy of musicians like if a musician leaves the band that's kind of the same deal man like when your favorite band split up but Dave Grohl goes off and uh-huh. makes Foo Fighters, right? Yep. It's like, so, okay, these guys are all right. rock stars yeah. in their mm-hmm. field. Okay. What are they going to do next? It's mm-hmm. that, they're all creatives. That's cool. So that's, that's very cool. cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so cool. Was, was there like an opening in, in Gadget or how did that work out? Okay, so then I ended up at Engadget because Joystick was shut down. Yeah. And this was not good. That was, you know, the Polygon thing was like, okay, that's fine. Yeah. We'll be fine. The, the Joystick shutting down thing was, I mean, not only a surprise, but it was it was just so confusing for us we had to like penny arcade they made Mm -hmm. a a comic based on joystick shutting down (laughs) because we literally had to report on the news of our own closure (laughs) because we could not get our bosses to tell us if we were closed oh my goodness that's bizarre i still work for this company so well it's very chris you know it was just (laughs) it was very like we were like what is going on you know like we knew it was happening yeah but they just would not tell us for sure Mm. right so that was frustrating um but yeah they uh in gadget so just kind of get absorbed into or well they could take one person from joystick and they took me and well, there you go. You're I, yeah, rock star. I got the call. I was like, yes, I will take that job. Thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, ended up hitting Gadget. And and all my the joystick people, they're mm-hmm. doing their own things. They're finding their their yeah their own way. Um, and they're doing some amazing things right now. Um, but how long have you been with Engadget to date? I think 
three years at just about three years yeah, yeah. Awesome. so it's it's been an, and I love doing tech reporting you know mm-hmm. on yeah. top of video games mm-hmm. now I get to write yeah. about yeah. all right. these so you're doing things. that a little more yeah. now as well mm-hmm. it's really fun awesome yeah it's mm-hmm. I, I love expanding the scope yeah yeah and it, you get to travel around to like all the mm-hmm. gaming conventions and, and play all the new mm-hmm. games before they're out I mean you know talk about a dream job no yeah. I mean it's exhausting I'm sure yeah. we've been to quite a few cons and uh, yeah, oh, just the con flus are the Dude. worst, man. After uh, the detox from yes. coming back from one, bringing yeah. back the plague Airborne every time. Baby. Airborne, buddy. <laughs> yeah, but like that's a good that's a good question for you know in the spirit of forged. And there's a lot of uh, people out there who are they just have an idea of like gaming journalism. That sounds like a rock star job to have. It's all yeah. fun. It's all games, right? right? I love like, telling people what I do. But yeah, like it's yeah. it's great if, to be like this is what I do. It's so fun. Yeah, right. If you have like column A, which is all the positive, super right. rad, cool things you get to do, like traveling to conventions, mm-hmm. and column B, which is like the behind the scenes, mm-hmm. down and dirty. You're spending X time in a hotel room. Like, what are the what's the pros and cons that you love the most? And the stuff that people don't know about that's maybe not the most fun stuff. Oof. Um, well, first, one thing that I think a lot of people that want to get into games journalism specifically don't realize, journalism is a lot of writing. It's a lot of writing. <laughs> mm. If you do not like writing, you're not going to like your job. Right. Get that. Is it just, just kind of like writing? Like, what, you know, like, it's, it's like so sending out a tweet writing. every now and then. Your right? job yeah. is writing. Yeah, yeah. So, like, that's that's one. Luckily, I like writing, mm-hmm. so that's that's not a bad thing for me. Um, no, the coolest, some of the cool stuff is traveling. Some of the worst stuff is traveling. Right? Yeah. Like, that's that's how it is. It sucks, but it's also amazing. Like, mm-hmm. I just got back from Germany yeah, for work. Awesome. Like, yeah. look, that's yeah. incredible. Gamescom. Yeah, and I played a bunch of great games yeah. there, and I had a blast. Um, I was also exhausted, and I got sick. You know, mm-hmm. that's okay. That's mm-hmm. that's fine. You take the good and the bad. Um, no, the, the the shitty stuff is just, I mean, dealing with people. You know, like dealing. You've got to deal with your boss. You got to deal with PR. You got to deal right. with whatever. It's just it's just like any other job. Uh-huh. It's shitty sometimes. Um, but yeah, I think honestly, the pros outweigh the cons. Um, you know, most days for me. That's sure. awesome. That's, <laughs> That's great. Now, do yeah. you, now, being gaming is life. Do you still have the same enjoyment from video games? Mm. Like, you know, that because I, I tried my hand at streaming a while back, and I just That's hard. it was it was yeah. exhausting, and I just I didn't enjoy playing games anymore yeah. because every time I played games and turned on that camera, I had to be on, mm-hmm. and it turned into more of like, well, I have to do this because of X, mm-hmm. and I was like, I'm, I'm I just have no interest in doing that. I want to enjoy my games. Mm-hmm. How has that kind of affected? that i play exclusively overwatch right now yes. like i know right Combo which is breaker. not bad Combo yeah. Breaker. Yeah. Thank you. not you <laughs> can i get some titanfall up in the house titanfall hey. <laughs> titanfall 2 is delicious back to overwatch hey, it is a great game back in 2001 it was oh, that's hurtful was i thought fine. you were complimenting my taste fine. for a moment you son of a you brainwashed your son too to titanfall no he's <laughs> now no you know what the he's kids really are now don't really say the word on. don't don't <laughs> F- 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 do we not Fortnite? No, Fortnite. Oh, oh, that Freaking Fortnite. It's just Fortnite. No, you can swear. All I played you want. it that's before it was. I you can Battle use Royale the curses. No, I'm bad at Fortnite. Yeah. That's fine. I'm terrible. I'm fine with I'm, that. Yeah, kids yeah. love that goddamn they game. They do. And they, they do. spent like 200 bucks in fucking bucks. <laughs> <key> packs <laughs> or whatever. Keeps them out of Overwatch. That's yeah. Angry yeah. father. Keeps them out of Overwatch. That's. I'm spending a lot of allowance money on that goddamn game. Whenever we play something that we don't like on Overwatch, you tell them to go play Fortnite. That's true. Okay. So you play a lot of All Overwatch the G's are in Titanfall. Uh, exclusively. Well, like right now, honestly, that's kind of just been yeah. how I turn my brain off. That's the game I can enjoy because I cover Sounds it. Right. I cover it big picture, but I don't do like you don't have to review that one. You don't, you know, it's just yeah. like okay, the patch rolls nice. out. I yep. can play it. Yep. Um, but no, I kind of yeah. I, like my my relationship to games has changed yep. from when I was a kid. It's yep. not just entertainment. Yeah. Every Must time be, yeah. even if Same I'm not film, booting right. up a game to cover it, I know I might write about, you know, I, yeah. there yeah. might be something so I need to kind of always be on the lookout. Mm-hmm. I really like sometimes I do sit back and dream of a day when I don't have to cut co- when I'm not when you're like on a games. farm and uh-huh. you can sit back and like, in your rocking chair and, and play video key. games again <laughs> you're like what are these video yeah. game things dude that's the yeah. same thing though we joke yeah. about this like watching movies you can't we can't, can't watch a movie off. without judging and no. being like how do they do that exactly. scene I know where yeah. that light Carrie, was placed. we'll just be watching movies. I'll just be like foreshadowing Unless like, I'm a little intoxicated yeah, exactly. on yeah. the old just bubbly, ruining everything. I can't enjoy <laughs> it. the same. And games too. <laughs> like I was I playing to. Spider-Man with my daughter, and you know she's three, and I'm like, it's so good. take a look at this and the lighting. Look how they've made through this, and she's like, Dad, what are you care. talking about? I yeah. want to yeah. sing more, yeah. please. Yeah. Which like, is, I, I, yeah, which is super fun. <laughs> which is and the game does yeah. look sick, dude. It is. One, yeah, so yeah, it doesn't take away that enjoyment, I guess. But yeah. like, but especially like playing games in preview before they come out. 
I have less of a desire, like, because sure. I'll play them at cons or I'll play them at events, yep. and then the game comes out, and I'm like, well, yeah, I've played 20, yeah. 20 minutes of it. I got a good idea. Mm. Like, so it's just like that that rush to get it isn't there. Right. Yeah. I've, I've become spoiled, I think. Yep. It's kind of like when you play really the beta of a game, and you're like, eh. yeah, I'm like, okay. Yeah. Has, it, has it shifted your preference and type of game? Like, now, mm. you know, is it more like that? Or, or do you feel like you want to play more indie games, or you get more out of them, or... I like indie games. Like, that's just... Even that's before, just, yeah. Oh, well, I guess yeah. you've been writing for a long time, but so yeah. yeah. Is it the human <clears throat> quotient behind how indie games are made, and like the small teams, or is it the gameplay itself, or both, or what it's do you like most play. about it? Yeah, it's the gameplay. Like the one that I always think about when I'm like trying to explain indie games to people is Towerfall. Oh, uh, yeah. and that game. We're talking, okay. we're talking about putting it up on the screen. See, yeah, <gasps> it would be yes. so cool, yes. dude. You want to play some Towerfall Let's later? Let's play some Towerfall. Yes. I'll kick your butt. Right. It'll be so good. If my laptop was here, we could play it tonight. We'll get that going soon. That'll okay. be fun. We'll get four, yeah. four jacks, cinema screen, movie theater screen. Size and then we'll play Overwatch and yes. kick your ass. Yes. That's yeah. fine, you guys. Go ahead. Oh, Land Party the Forge. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got the play of the game the first time I ever played no, it. Just wanted to know. Whatever. Yeah, I doubt that. That's fine. Even if he did, it was Torg. <laughs> he was dead. <laughs> it was just the turret shooting. Just the like Just going to enjoy some more whiskey here. Good job. Last night I had a sim. There, Somebody else on our team had a sim play the game. And it was, and it was basically a Torb sim of the game because yeah. she was dead. Yeah, of course. Time. I'll be back. Like, oh, yeah. That's great. Nerds. <laughs> oh, you could just do that? You could just leave well, your own podcast? Well, we don't, but Scott's very unprofessional, so. Scott's like, I'm Scott likes. Drink! Can I have a shot? Scott likes to do yeah, this. What would you like? Whiskey. Bartender? Whiskey, please. <laughs> You want a um, blunt like Elon I Musk too? <laughs> I have my pen. Let's get let's get YouTube just blowing up these comments. I have my pen. I mean, I'm just saying it's legal. And gadgets gonna. It's legal in Arizona. Um, yeah. No, Towerfall. Yeah. So Towerfall, yeah. I bring that one up because it's the one that like I feel like anyone can pick up and play. Mm -hmm. The graphics are retro but so well done really the animations amazing. are so yeah, yeah. good very well done. So we're like, huge fans of that pixel art so that's good. just beautiful pixel art but also Absolutely. as i was saying it's got a it's really easy to enter but there's also a it's high so bar hard. of of mastery yeah. so they Absolutely. have the tournaments and everything it's beautiful and, yeah it's so a perfect cool. game and that's an indie game that's like made by one dude mm. You know, and, and yeah. artists and like, but sure. yeah. basically just yeah. not, comes a, from not a thousand man a team. handful. Right? Of people. Did yeah. you play Stardew Valley? No. Okay, because I don't want to get trapped it, you'll, in you'll that. Saw, you, I That's played for two a long too much, time, right? Yeah. But yeah. It, again, one guy, right? But again, it's exactly beautiful game. Exactly. Yeah. So well done. So cool. in depth and so cool. It's so, so cool. new and yeah. fresh, but it's still yeah. familiar. Yeah, mm -hmm. that God, was one of those games where you just kind of play and shut off and. You just I gotta get my crops. Exactly. I mean, it seems ridiculous, but it, yeah. yeah, and that's why I think Switch is doing so well too, Dude, because yeah. it's so good at just you get it's easy sunk to grab in there. And walk around with it. It's yeah. so good. You can take it with you. It's, oh, yep. Yeah. Switch is great. Yep. Switch yeah. is great. Switch is great. Yeah. Sweet. I have Smash Bros. coming games out. Games for your kids. Ooh, games for the Smash kids. Bros. <gasps> Dark Souls remastered. <laughs> Yeah, I'm all I, about I that. I can't, man. A quiet hush rolls over. I haven't played any of those. So. Dude, they're so good. It. Can't do Dark Souls. I haven't played those, and I haven't played uh, Smash it's, Bros. It's like, so you play a game, you know, it's just the oh, difficulty. Interested. It's like when you beat that boss, you legitimately feel like you accomplished something mm -hmm. because yeah. it was so damn difficult. You, you had to earn it. You had to earn yeah. it, dude, and I love yeah. that because there's so many games that are just like, press, hold Y to see the path to the next mm. objective. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's like, am I just a mindless idiot? And then I went back, yeah. and it's funny because I went back and played um, a little bit of Perfect Dark for 64, Ooh. and there is nothing telling you what to do. I, I couldn't even dude. get past the first level. For because there were, I remember there was, when you had to wait for Nintendo Power no, to give you tips and dude, tricks. There, dude, tricks, there were no waypoints. <laughs> to t It was mm -hmm. just like, yeah. figure it out, kid. Or even those old... I love that. Uh, I do like that. Yeah. I do like that. <laughs> the old um, click and whatever... Point and and click, click things. The adventures? Like, yeah, you had no idea. You're just like, yeah. You'd go what, in circles, it'd be so frustrating. Could, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, What verbs to use, what, where are you yeah. going? Like, you, you have to combine items and go. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. The reward system for those older games was mm -hmm. like legitimate achievement. Like, yep. yes, I figured Even it Mario. out. Even Mario, yeah. Like, yeah. It's, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love, see, I love that, but Dark Souls. I'm it's tortured punishing. enough in my. You'll hear real a lot life. of choice words it's coming from me. Punishing. <laughs> it's punishing. It's punishing. No, dude, it is. You will get I mean, almost every it's single enemy much. in the game can kill you in one hit. Mm -hmm. it's Everyone in, dude, from the get. It's oh. <laughs> yeah. That see, I don't awful. that. I'm not into it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Like oh. I could see it as like a meta thing, like in it. WoW or something, where you have yeah. a boss sure. that's like that, uh -huh. where you're like, you got yeah. hardcore strategy uh -huh. and a team, and you're all figuring this out. Yeah. But by myself, <laughs> dude, it's intense. I know like one when I'm boss alone after at another. Home. Well, too, like, like, the, the like <laughs> so, like you start at a bonfire and you have to get to the next bonfire, otherwise, you won't save. So if you cannot right. get past those specific enemies and you have a limited amount of lives, essentially, and a limited amount of health, 
Yeah. And so you have to wisely, every single thing you do has to be calculated or you will never progress through the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like, I'm intrigued. But it's cool. yeah, and I the only way to do that is to die a bunch of it's times. True. And I just, yeah, I'm yep. a game that's designed to make me die a bunch of times. <laughs> ugh, I can't, I can't. Yeah. 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 The well, older I get, the less patience I have for those games. Yeah, I do need to say before true. we before this doesn't happen, but um, I met you originally when you were at Joystick because mm-hmm. you came and you that's covered right. the party oh that my we God. had. Oh, that's opening. right. I knew you before Going he back, knew you. That's how I got I to know you guys. That. I forgot yes, about that. Yeah, we were talking about this earlier. Like <clears throat> you're getting to this, right? Catalysts in mm-hmm. life. Okay, yeah. carry on, sir. <laughs> yeah, but, we're around I mean, the campfire. Like, pop up much more, but pop no, no, because we met because yeah. you were doing games. I started in Game Cool Lab. Yeah, and I started the in the warehouse downtown. Mm-hmm. And we had was that before or after beef sticks or beef cakes or grinder? Beef jack. Jack. <laughs> oh, God. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Grinder's great. I don't know. These are all great things. This Wait, what? <laughs> I think beef jack's still up, right? But they they're like I don't a know, flashlight ben, is it? or something now. I, I do. Like, anyways, I yeah. hope they're a flashlight because yeah. that's the only thing that makes flashers sense. and beef yeah. jack. Okay, hmm. <gasps> tell me tell more. Me more. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's fine. Is this so, like yes. a beef jerky He's, company? Like this no, this was so. This was after that. Okay. Jack Link. Seven years ago. Yeah. When I moved back to the states, that jerky that big is when I started eats. writing for Beef Jack, and then after that, I got I started working at ASU. Yeah. And then after that, I started Game Collab, and we start. I did that downtown Phoenix, in the warehouse <laughs> district. <laughs> and yeah, and you came and you covered our like our mm-hmm. opening night party, which was mm-hmm. pretty which was dope. awesome. It was in that big warehouse. Yeah. Like there were floats from the parade, like in the yeah. corners. Nice. Big, I think that was that, right? Yeah, yeah it's tight. Snake one. Wait, yeah. there was a cobra. It was a big Before snake. Before Cobra. Cobra's look at, been an omen in this circle it, for some it time, hasn't thing. it? Shout out to Cobra yeah. Arcade. Look at my Instagram. Cheers. There's a picture Tofer of it on there. Yeah. yeah. Like, that was, I remember that night. That was really cool. And I saw Aaron and uh, Steve yeah. Swink and, yeah. and uh, Ben Ruiz. Ben. Mm-hmm. And I still talk. I mean, I talked with Ben recently. Wagner and Matt Wagner was there. Yeah. yeah. And so we met Ben through you, essentially. Yeah. Right. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Through the power of games and cinema. Yeah, you connected me with Scott through email. Yeah. And all I remember you telling me is like, yeah, Professor Ben Reichert at University of Advancing Tech. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be some old dude i was like, I was no, like he's shit fine. He's here we go, go gotta go. convince some old dude to help us with this stupid movie <laughs> Profe- Dr. We, ben. Dude, yeah we roll down there and ben's like hey guys how you doing and well, out comes kevin podcast? sorbo and looking like kevin sorbo and shit and i was like this dude's got tattoos he's rad he's like us and my sister knows cool people and he helped us make that film possible and I was like, okay. Yeah. Well, little, we talk about that film back in a our... Friendship uh, Erupted. Episode 10, it 11, did. episode 11, we yeah. talked about that. Yeah. I'm so happy about that. I yeah. forgot that... Oh, I did that. I you did that. Mm-hmm. You owe me. All right, mm-hmm. cool. We literally, gonna, yeah, we, I messaged you because we were like three days out from needing an asset. And you're like, well, I got a guy. I was like, I knew I you a would. I got a guy. And the dude I was cool. Guy. Who Wasn't knows another guy? guy? Well, that also yeah. marks like us kind of working together too, creatively. Like, which is... Me's and you. Kind of cool. Us, yeah. 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 And yeah. we're now kind of in the same realm and we get to collaborate a yeah. lot. I think and the first so cool. The first thing yeah. we all did together was... The Mutation. The Resident Evil. The Resident Evil Yeah, the video. That was rad. That did very well too. That, that video, like everyone was raving about that's it, fun. and it nice. got a lot of views. And that's cool. It's a great yeah. video. It was a great video. We should fun. do another one with like some kind of cool tech for oh, gaming. Hmm. Maybe we will. Mm. Yeah, I think this week we're gonna play mm. with the. Do we want to talk about the Let's hardware? I, don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, have, I don't even know what we're doing. So that's yes. one of the perks of your job, right? You get to play mm-hmm. with like the coolest tech yes. before anyone gets their hands on it. And you got a fart yeah. machine. That oh, we're I got a fart machine. It farts in your face. It's great. Tell us about that. So okay, I actually saw this thing at um, CES this year. So mm-hmm. Engadget does the best of CES awards, like uh-huh. the officially sanctioned sanctioned yeah. that stuff. It's really, really cool. Mm-hmm. And um, I, so I was looking, I was on the hunt for gaming products and I was walking through one of the halls. CES is crazy. Uh-huh. It's in Vegas, it's tech show, yeah, it's, I mean, it's E3 on steroids, it's crazy. Um, so I'm walking through the halls and I see like Vortex Gaming. I'm like, okay, so I stop in. And it's just this little tower that you put next to your, your PC or uh-huh. whatever. Okay. And it blows hot or cold air at your face at Mm. varying speeds, depending on what's happening on screen. So it plugs into any game, is what they promise. It plugs into any any YouTube video. How's it, I need to know that no okay. YouTube video. Make, okay, we're gonna try it out. I I don't know. YouTube videos where people fart into the screen, and then it'll be like. Oh my god, it'll be perfect. We should try it. No, we'll try it and Ooh, see if it can I watched read. a video on YouTube where they were using an infrared camera to map people's fart signatures. It's perfect. Let's try that pew, one. Pew, pew. Are yep. they kind of like thumbprints where everyone's fart is different? Everyone's fart, it tastes different. <laughs> tastes? I don't know about, so, I don't, that's what the Scott's video said. a little bit, you know, we, we keep them in a pin in the corner. 
A little bit so, of wild card, ladies face? and gentlemen. So he his face and he tells us how it tastes. <laughs> Wait, does this thing have smell vision too, or is it There's just no smell heat? vision? Okay. As this long is getting as real the wrong way. It's heat or, or so. Cold. Essentially, this yeah. thing Let's get this dumpster helps fire to create like a four di- fourth dimension of like yeah. So it's like it's a more immersive way to play. Okay. Like they did it. I played it with uh, Doom. They had as a demo because uh-huh. there's a bunch of fire. Yeah, and it was awesome. Doom so is my jam. like, if it really does work with every game on every video, then that's amazing that's crazy yeah. um so we'll try it out yeah. but we'll film a video and you know let the people know we, how it goes yeah i mean we've met them with the immersion guy immersive guys right mm-hmm. it was immersive they did the, the immersion the, it was immersion I think, yeah. I think it's immersion yeah okay yeah immersion doing they the do all the haptic stuff, feedback all the haptic stuff. feedback for all the controllers and everything yeah but those things like that was we gave so them our, cool yeah. we gave them our video and they yeah. did it for show no mercy so when you watch it on a phone it would it does it haptically that. haptics no that's yeah. cool yeah. but they have but to they code have to, it in yeah exactly. exactly they have to right. time when those are going to happen so and i don't how, know how intense and everything i don't know i'm actually i'll have a call with them i think tomorrow actually so i'm going to ask them a little more how their system works yeah and then we'll film the video and let everyone know as they're talking it's just a bunch of hot air blowing on you <laughs> yeah i'm just like i don't even have oh, really that's up. how it works huh? oh the ceo is talking again good <laughs> it's like a lot good. of hot air you guys leave are the bed way. just ruin everything <laughs> that's okay. they're like we don't want these guys touching our tech at all at all it sounds awesome it sounds like it could be really cool mm-hmm. and like if you wore it or if you did it while you're wearing vr headset yeah like, exactly air, i can just imagine I playing like, tomb raider for that yeah. you know it's just oh, so yeah. immersive there's always something happening it's always hot or cold or something like yeah. extreme right yeah. so yeah, yeah. i think you cool. should find a way to put some kind of like flavoring in there for sure like no. you know like a little no. a little drop flavoring? of scott farts yeah well like yeah, oh, no. you know like go on <laughs> flavoring i'm listening i mean like Talk i said I, I would love to play like overwatch and every time with ryan i do like a charge and it's like a berry flavor that shoots that's at me. It's that like very so pavlovian cool. like that's interesting that's yeah. cute yeah i would love that see I would ben, love why he's that. been charging off the map again oh he <laughs> just loves those berries what? <sighs> <laughs> and then the moira would have the pee smell every time she healed you <laughs> who do you guys mean are you Ryan? Ryan? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, between Soldier, Moira, Winston. He's okay. Moira. Anna. Yeah, I do Moira. a lot of Moira too. I roast. I'm. Uh, I'm I play really a lot of Moira because I can just. Yeah, I'm a you can no, you can carry yeah. it with her. Yeah, 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 like because yeah. she does both. Exactly. It's amazing. Yeah. I end up with five gold medals. Like yeah, exactly. I'm she's sorry. ridiculous. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah she's cool. But I like to, I like to flex a lot. Like, like who are you meaning? Uh, Moira a lot, but I also do a lot of Diva and Arisa. Nice. And and May is great too. Yeah. I've been playing. I used to so Mercy. Than Winston, but now Brigitte is getting up there. Mm. I am bad at her. She's hard her. to kill. Like I She's hate playing against her. Yeah. Who do you play, Scott? None of them. Oh, oh. see, you know, we had such a nice conversation. Yeah. It's really going cool, on. and you killed it. Let me tell you what. Warm and fuzzies. One monarch titan rolls up in there. They will slay all of them for days. Put a combo okay. breaker. You give me a tone. I'm all over it. <laughs> Great. Ah. Thanks. Back one day we'll get point, him. Though. We'll one get him. day we'll get him. It's an enjoyable game if you're it's just feeling like something easy and slow and and better than Titanfall. Colorful this is coming from the guy who played and won Goldeneye against his little sister. Yeah, I was a slayer. And stepfather. Yeah. Okay, let's good. just see. This is where good. it comes from. I'm telling you. Do your kids beat you in Titanfall? Yes, of course they do. Oh my, god, my little yes. kid, dude, Logan. Of course they do. Is a, <laughs> he's amazing. Logan. He's like a level fifty wizard slaying kids. I hear other like older thirty year old dudes on the other end of his comm set just swearing their heads that's up. That's awesome. I'm like, don't listen. You taught to him so. well. Yeah, he's good. Mm-hmm. He's good. Well, he's used to swearing. I mean, he is. That's, that's okay. What the fuck are you talking that's about? N- that's not going to screw uh, him up. That's all I'm saying. He's tough. He's tough. You can take it. So yeah, I mean that. Like you get to play with tons of cool tech. What's been the favorite piece of tech you've gotten to kind of uh, audition before anyone else has gotten their hands on it with, with your role in journalism? That, well, I got an Xbox One about two weeks before it came out. Nice. That was a, That's super exciting. That was so exciting. Is that Xbox the ones you were what? selling out of the Shut trunk your of your car? That uh, no. Yeah. Oh, sh- oh yeah. Sh- no. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Forgot. Oh, I still have it. No. Uh, that was like that was cool, and that was a whole thing where like if people came over, I had to cover it, mm-hmm. and like you know not because that was a that was a big new deal. console that generation deal. launches yeah. are huge. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. you have some pretty stringent NDAs. There, and, if it shows up in an Instagram photo, mm, you know, yeah. in the background or whatever, like that's bad. Mm-hmm. But like that was that was cool. Um, but one that I'm like still excited about that hasn't really hit the market yet is is VR ish related. Mm. Sorry. Um, it's the Magnus VR gloves, and it, it's this kind of haptic feedback thing. Yeah. But it's just they're they're gloves that you put on, and you can just have your full range of motion in VR. 
without holding the controller with or? no controller it's just oh, you are just like doing cool. this and this and this Some and mon- you, minority report right there it's so cool so yeah. I've, I've tried them a few times at conventions um but they haven't come out with a, a full product yet but they're right. getting there mm-hmm. um but like stuff like that that's cool i love seeing the really like bleeding mm-hmm. edge kind of mm-hmm. i've been i saw those what two three years ago mm-hmm. and like i'm still excited about them yeah. so that's cool. i don't know we'll see where vr goes though i'm really mm-hmm. more interested in ar you mm-hmm. know like that's kind of yeah, but for games, VR makes more sense. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, more immersive. It is, and it's like you're okay being in that world. You're okay seating, like mm-hmm. being seated, seated, and mm-hmm. like doing that thing. Mm-hmm. Right. I just had a shot of whiskey. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> wow, that's cool. That's power glove for 2018, huh? It's true. Magnus. It's the Magnus power glove. Yes. <laughs> Not power glove. Hmm. Yeah. Well, we had some we had some cool VR stuff. Dude, Striker VR. Max that was one mm-hmm. of the coolest things ever. We've got that in our film. Yeah. It's a completely haptic recoil uh, gun. It yeah. feels like Oh, my love gosh. It, it was <laughs> cool. <laughs> that yeah. and the hard light vest. The hard light, yeah. Get is there a, a place yeah. in town that is a VR yeah. uh, a VR amusement park, they call there it? There is one. Well, really? Um, yeah. Yes. You want to do a video still. there? I haven't. Yeah. I need to go there, but I've, I've heard about it. That's one of the full ones with the teams yep. and everything. It's a big warehouse. Yep. How long has that been around? It's been around for a little while. At least a couple years. You know what those are. I need to into one but Touch like i didn't walls. know there was one here yeah, yeah. that's yep. so cool I, I ran into the guy who owns it in, in e3 last year huh. but then Ad we E3. just dropped yeah sorry, how E3. funny yeah. yeah right and yeah. he's like yeah i have the place i'll be out there at scottsdale later this month. sounds but like I, a forge x field trip we definitely guys. hit him up yeah. Yeah. let's go oh mm-hmm. that would be so cool yeah I, I I mean I love laser tag I love paintball like yeah. oh, right, let's go exactly. do the so, VR stuff like yeah, that yeah, sounds good. Heck, so I wonder yeah. if they have like the Predator one that we saw. What did we see? Well, Predator they had aliens, and aliens, Predator, right? and a Jurassic Park one I think. Okay, where nice. they're going through the jungle. So. I don't want to shoot dinosaurs. I do. Oh. I do. I do. No ones with big teeth. You can shoot them. Well, and eat they'll, them they'll, they'll eat you. And if then they're we'll mean, I guess. you can eat them like That's Matrix fine. steaks. Um, nom nom nom. No, I'd rather see. He looks nice. He's happy. He looks nice. Look, nice. he's laughing. He's, he's like, ha, 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 you're so funny, Ben. Oh, man. Oh, Hilarious. It's a, it's a generous dinosaur. He's so nice. <laughs> Wait, what is he laughing at? <laughs> well, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> and we're back. Gotta go fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um, one of the other things we talk a lot about, excuse me, uh, with our guests is during the course of their, thank you, sir, during the course of their... Um, like creative uprising right there's been people or a singular person who's been a mentor who really came to them at a pivotal moment it was like it's not you scott you can do this i know we've gotten past that <laughs> but, <laughs> but like, during college or during was there was there one teacher mm. or one person who was like damn you're good at this you should mm. really consider a path in x or was there that mentor figure at the crossroads for you and if not that's cool too hmm. um yeah i mean looking back there was there were definitely you know plenty of professors that didn't get what i was doing and all that stuff but then at, in college specifically there was one professor uh dr uh g pascal zachary that's a solid name it's wonderful greg um he's he was the one person who like when i said i want to do games journalism was like wonderful Hmm. let's talk about that and he was into it and he got it and he writes for um ie spectrum like he you know he knows what is what is going on um so he and he was the one that actually in my final semester got me into an honors class that talked about near future science fiction literature which nice. was just Very cool. god amazing. such a great that sounds class. Like an awesome class it was an amazing class i read octavia butler for the first time there and like that changed my my sci-fi perspective it was it was so cool so he was really he was really supportive but, but I, I mean like I don't know I, I feel like I found a lot of this shit on my own mm-hmm. um, I feel like a lot of people helped me get here but in the end when you see the path you need to fucking go for it and mm-hmm. like I did that I did that and yeah. I, I want to take responsibility for that because like it was really cool it was and it worked it, out yeah. well you yeah. know if yeah. it didn't work yeah. out well I would still be saying I tried yeah but like and it's still going I did well. that and yeah you're still mm-hmm. continuing yeah. to grow in that yeah but but professor Zachary was <laughs> incredible so like he's definitely the one that like I would say interesting did that. and yeah. so like we, we like to talk about you know if you could talk to people that were interested in this or your yourself if you go back in time mm-hmm. like what would you say how would you encourage you know um, there's a lot of people that have a lot of self doubt, and, and should I even do this? Is yeah. this, you know, is this viable? Uh, but you know, you can do anything you want in this mm-hmm. life. And so, what would you, you know, tell them? I think back a lot to the day, like the literal hour when I applied for the joystick job. Mm. 
I was living in a condo in Tempe with two roommates that, you know, I knew from high school, but like, it was a condo in Tempe. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I, was in, yeah. I was in school, like, come on. And it wasn't the best, but like, the world was my oyster. Mm-hmm. I was gonna graduate college soon, you know, all these things. And I almost didn't apply. Mm. I almost didn't apply for Joystick. I think about that moment wow. all the time where I decided to ride my bike to the Starbucks that was down the street and fill out my application instead of just sitting in the living room with my friends watching YouTube videos uh-huh. and learning Lady Gaga dances, which we did that is a solid. lot of. Okay. We did yeah. a lot of that. Now it's K-pop dances. I've evolved. <laughs> but Man, but no, like, like I think about that. <laughs> Hey, oh, we can go for another hour oh, about just, the merits of K-pop. Tangled. But, yeah. No, it's just like... What are those, those little cupcake pops? Yeah, the other so K-pop. They sell them at K-cup oh, Starbucks. Starbucks. Those Starbucks, are delicious, yeah. yeah. The yeah. pink ones, and birthday cake. Beef Jacks, cake. Jacks too. Beef Jacks, mm. beef Jacks, Lynx Jerky. So, okay. Can we get a sponsorship? But you click Either the button way. and you apply. Either way, I did it. Like, yeah. I, I, had, I had a choice mm-hmm. and... It wasn't like I didn't want to apply because I didn't think it could or whatever. It was just like, well, it probably won't happen, whatever. You can yeah. convince yourself oh, you of tell yourself so many stories. things. Uh-huh. Exactly. Yep. You can convince yourself it's not going to happen. You can convince yourself it's not worth it. Or you can yeah. do it. Get or you can fucking head. do it. Right. You Even can if go, it doesn't work, you yeah. tried. Yeah. You can apply. You can yeah. take the half hour to apply. You yeah. can take mm-hmm. the half hour to write a post that you right. write for free mm-hmm. for a while. Do not work for sure. free for long. Yes. Like, mm-hmm. if you yes. have to, please, you know, take that path. But... Mm. But do not work for free for long. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I just that moment. I think about that a lot. So that was then. You might not know what it was that took you to that to that point. But now, you know, just today, you said it's you know it's still hard. Like mm-hmm. you get those doubts about um you know am I am I the right person for this or whatever. Like how how do you how does what is your day like? How do you psych yourself out? You know, how do you get past those blocks where it's like, uh, maybe I'm not good enough and trying to beat yourself down, but how, mm-hmm. how do you get past? How do you move forward? Is there something you've learned throughout this time to just keep going and stay passionate about it all? So, like, literally every time I publish a story, it doesn't matter if it's a five-second news post that I just wrote because Apple had an event and I had to get something up, mm-hmm. or if it's something that I've worked months on, there's the same feeling right before I click publish, and it's, what if everything in this post is wrong? Mm-hmm. And that's literally every post. Like, I, I had one that went live today, and I was like, <gasps> okay, mm-hmm. you know, and it's always fine. It's always fine. So just do the fucking work. I mm-hmm. don't know. Like, do the work. Yeah. Is it like do it. factually you're concerned it's wrong, or is it just like, it's factually, or is it it's just like, is this right? Reputationally, is it done? Is it, yeah. it's everything. It's what will this mean for my future career? Mm-hmm. What will, what if, what if I got this detail wrong? What if this wasn't totally vetted? What if, mm-hmm. but I mean, I mean, that's what you need for journalism. You need yeah. to question everything, and that's yeah. good. But there's always that doubt. Everyone has that voice that says, you are not qualified to do this. Oh, what, yeah. are, what the fuck are you doing here? Yeah. Like, yeah. why do you think you get, to, it's like, no, no, no. When you do the work, and you put it out there, it's never going to be as bad as you think, unless you've fucked up, and then sometimes that happens. That's fine. <laughs> right. It's not but the end like, of the world. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. So like, <laughs> you just keep doing the work. You keep doing the work and proving to yourself that you can do it. Mm-hmm. And like, that's, that's literally it every day for me. Yeah. It's just keep doing the work. So to paraphrase Jess Condit, take the shot, don't work long for free, and do mm-hmm. the work. Do the work. That's a good rule. Th- that's three good rules right there. That's solid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's solid. I'll take it. I like it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, cheers to you, sister, and all your accomplishments. Where can people follow you on cheers, the boys. IGs and the on, on the, the socials and all that? Um, Where yeah, can on follow your writing. Twitter, I am Jess Condit, and then on Instagram, which is where I post most of my like, this is me living a life. Um, That's Jess L Condit. The lifestyle stuff. Live the lifestyle. The life. Live in the, the I like pups. Instagram. Like, yeah. if I didn't Don't have... Yeah, there's a bunch of dog pictures uh-huh. on Instagram. Um, Twitter is where I post most of my stories. Like, that's more yeah. professional. I don't really tweet much. Yeah. I wouldn't be on social media if I didn't have a job that required me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but I would use Instagram. That is the one I would use. So, yeah. Cool. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Well, cool. So, again, for our Patreon subscribers, we'll be chatting a little bit more mm-hmm. after this interview. So, yeah. if you haven't Ooh. gotten on there... Get on there. You now know. Yeah, backstage if pass. You don't know. Become a fan. Now Get that know. backstage pass. Here's some more ramblings. We might have a few more whiskeys. Yeah. Oh, it might happen. Love you, sister. Love you. And now cool. to the backstage pass. Thanks, guys. <laughs>